Hello everyone and welcome to this video. This is my first example using the stiffness method and this is the problem I'm going to solve. This problem only consists of truss or bar elements so it is a relatively easy problem and shouldn't take too long. Um, this is the problem I'm going to solve. Above here you can see is only the um, template I derived in the previous video where you um, just derive the or work out the element matrix for each element specifically for a bar element so yeah um, it's good practice when you get a problem to always number your elements as you can see they are numbered 1 and 2 in this example and also number your nodes as you can see it's 1, 2 and 3 numbered here and also nodes 2 and 3 are pinned so that means the horizontal and vertical displacements at those two nodes is going to be zero. So what I'm going to work out is the horizontal vertical displacement of node 1 and also the reaction forces on node 2 and 3. Okay, so let's get started. Firstly, I'm going to calculate um, the length of each element. They will be the same length. I'm going to say L is equal to 1.25 equals 1.25 by cos radians 16 hey that's also 2.5 meters what do you know okay so now I want to get the element matrices for both elements I'm going to start with element 1 which is from node 2 to 1 but you can also see these element matrices are almost going to be the same but the angle is going to differ because if you just scroll up this sketch here shows the angle is measured from node 1 to node 2 positive upwards so the angle of element 1 is going to be 60 and angle of node 2 is going to be 180 minus 160 that's going to be 120 degrees okay so I'm just going to put in for element 1 the area is going to be 6e minus 4 down to minus 70e9 length is 2.5 and theta is 60. That, that will be our element 1 matrix. I'm just going to say K E1 copy that value paste it there paste values So now the correct values are copied. I also like to um, number my matrix as you um, are almost like that, but just so I know which um, value corresponds to which degree of freedom. So element one is from node two to one, so we're going to go then node two corresponds to u1 and v1 and u2 v2 in this case and node. 1 is going to be u1 v1 so node 2 that's going to be u2 v2 and node 1 is going to be u1 v1 okay that should make sense I'm just gonna copy that paste the transpose of it Okay, and I'm going to do the same for the second element for KE2. I'm going to copy my template. Okay, have it there. Okay, so for element 2, the area stays the same, the Young's modulus stays the same, L stays the same, except for theta is going to be equal. Um, 80 minus 60, which is 120, and there's our matrix. Copy that. Paste values again. The reason why I paste values is if I just say equals that and I um, calculate another element, then both is going to change and then yeah, then it's useless. So 
Now always remember to, to place values to be use the same method that I do. Then again for element two, that is from node three to node one, so it's gonna be U three, V three, U one, V one again. Again U three U three sorry. Okay, so now what I want to do is want, I want to assemble a system matrix or a global matrix, which is generally big K, and I've made a lookup or indexing method video, you can look, look at that also, but I use that because Excel can organize um, this matrix for you by itself if you um, give it the right parameters. So what I usually do, I put in u1, u1, u2, u2, u3, u3, and paste the transpose as I did previously. Alright, so here comes the interesting part. Um, I say equals if error. I'm going to say v lookup, which stands for vertical lookup. Sorry, let's start again. Equals if error. Vertical lookup is looking for that value in that array. And we use match that value with that array. Say so exact match it is zero and false. Zero. And let's see, U1, U1 is 42, 42 and lots of zeros, so that seems correct. So I'm just going to put for el the other element. Um, yeah, let me firstly say this. You must fix those by pressing F4. Excel fixes it. And you always keep the same array. This is um, ne um, necessary for the drag and drop feature, which I'm going to do now. And also, that is always going to be in column E. I'm going to put a dollar sign before that. And that is always going to be row 57. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before that as well. And now that's ready to be used or dragged. Okay, so that's for the first element. I'm going to say copy plus paste for the second one. So all I need to change now is the arrays. So this one is going to be there. And this one is going to be there. To fix it again by pressing F4, clicking and press F4. And that should be our first one. So enter, that's 84 and a lot of zeros. So U1, U1 is 42 and also 42. So that might be four. that looks correct. I'm going to drag it and see the values pop up as you go along. And this looks cor correct because node 3 and node 2 is not connected by an element. So that's why there's zeros. And also a good test is to check if your matrix is symmetrical. That's also a good test. Okay, so now we have our global matrix. So now I'm just going to set up the equation, which is, I'm just going to write it down for you. 
it is forces equal to k times e. I use the um, curly brackets to indicate a, big, um, a vector. So that's it. So now I can just copy that. Can also paste links, which says basically this is equal to that. That's handy for if you want to maybe change one of these matrices or area or something like that. Okay. So next I'm just going to put the equal sign there. And now we need our forces. So our forces are on node 1. The horizontal force is 60,000 in the positive direction. Vertical is 0. And node 2 and node 3 is unknown. So I'm just going to put H2, V2, H3, and V3. Okay, and that is times displacement as node at node, node 1 is the displacement we want, so I'm just going to keep it as u1 and v1, and the rest, node 2, node 3 is pin, so their displacement is going to be 0. Okay, so now it's just ma basic matrix operations. So these are all zeros, so it, even when I multiply with them, they're going to be multiplied by 0, so I can essentially markers is bad, I'm not going to use them. And that is going to be in my first equation. And that is going to be in my second equation to um, solve the reactions. Okay, so firstly, I'm going to solve that. So copy, paste the day, equals, equals. So, yeah equals in M multiply and I'm going to multiply the inverse of that with that so I'm going to say M inverse of that array multiply that with that value and it's very important when you use it when doing matrix calculations in Excel to Remember to press shift and enter. Otherwise you're not going to get both values. What did I do now? Let's just try this again. Control shift enter. Sorry, I was wrong previously. I said shift enter. It's control shift enter, and then you get the values. And now what I want to do, I want to use those two values which come there to solve the reactions. So I'm going to say copy the reactions equals again equals matrix multiply. That there's no need for inverse because this is a linear equation, just so that matrix times that matrix. That comma say the then control shift enter. And there's my reactions in Newton. All of them is going to be in Newton. And to get that in kilonewtons. 
I'm just gonna this equal at one thousand. So yeah, there you go, this is my first example done, it was not that difficult as you can see. Um, this is a very small example, this um, problem gets a lot bigger when you have um, more elements as you can see then this row expands with more elements and this matrix gets bigger as well and also when the nodes are not nicely numbered as this you need to rearrange your global matrix and my next example um, with beam elements I will cover this so, thank you very much for watching please like this video if you enjoyed it and found it helpful again this file which I set up now will be um, linked in the description for you to go have a look at and yeah thank you very much